Hello and welcome to the show. We are currently experiencing a digital revolution that has forced businesses to reimagine their approach to engaging customers and delivering value through their products and services. The COVID-19 pandemic has underscored the importance of digital transformation for industries, businesses and society at large. By embracing the power of digital transformation, visionary leaders are creating a more sustainable world by fostering trust through human-centric innovation. However, to ensure that digital transformation delivers on its potential, it's crucial to consider risks beyond the traditional ones we know of. To effectively manage risk during digital transformation, organizations need to take a proactive approach by identifying potential risks and developing mitigation strategies. Additionally, they must equip their employees with their skills and knowledge needed to navigate the changes and continually monitor the transformation's progress to identify any challenges that may arise. So what steps can companies take to prepare for and mitigate these risks? To discuss these issues and more, we have with us Kaivalya V, founder and CTO of Zepto, Siddharth Vishwanath, PwC cyber leader, and Shankar Vishwanathan, CIO of Sundaram Clayton Limited. So gentlemen, welcome to the show. Uh, delighted to have you all with us. Uh, I'll start first with you, Siddharth. Looking at the current geopolitical scenario, I mean, you deal with a lot of clients uh, in your role. Uh, what do you think is the response from clients around risk as we uh, sort of face what is clearly an uncertain, uh, you know, sort of ecosystem around us? No, I think uh, that's a great question, uh, Saurav. And I think uh, one of the key areas that uh, clients are looking at to say that how do we de-risk in this context of geopolitical scenario? I think two dimensions that I will talk about. One is largely around supply chain. So how do we de-risk from a supply chain standpoint? Would there be countries that could potentially be sanctioned in the future? And therefore, do I need to hedge myself? So I think that's one big area. And the second area is in partnership, whether it's with vendors or with distributors, you've got to be doubly careful now today today's world to say are you dealing with an outfit which is uh, where you know there are issues around money laundering or there are issues around sanctions so you know all of that has become uh, highly uh, you know greatly in focus in many ways so i think i think those would be the two areas that i'm hearing from clients Kavale, you are in a business which is all about risk in that sense in sure. uh, i mean while it's very exciting it's it's really important uh, now and it's growing uh, sharply but at the same time we've seen how the pandemic has completely mm -hmm. upended uh, this uh, many businesses including uh, the likes of uh, your business uh, how are you now facing the future i think the pandemic has actually gave birth to our business groceries essentials getting them delivered was especially heightened during the pandemic um, when it comes to risk for us uh, now is obviously the supply chain risk, et cetera, exist. Um, but what we're thinking about more so is things around security, cybersecurity, et cetera, right? At the scale that we're at, millions of transacting customers. Um, there's a lot of information, a lot of data that uh, we have. And so uh, the way we look at it is that is one big part of it. Um, the other is with any, we're a year and a half, two year old organization. and We've grown very quickly within that. And so thinking about and trying to solve for are um, more on bringing in a lot more financial controls, financial governance, right? Just to, um, you know, make sure that uh, where there's no risk there as well. So for us, it's more within those two buckets, more on the security front, as well as um, some of the financial controls internally, right? Uh, to make sure that as we're building this over the next few decades, uh, we're setting, us up, setting ourselves up for um, you know, a successful sort of outcome. Shankar, your business also is, and you are in the, in the uh, you are a CIO, you know what risk is about. What are the key risks you are facing uh, or you look at uh, in terms of your business? You know, we, the business we are in, we uh, supply castings to uh, specific manufacturers in Western Europe and in the United States. So what happens is, the German manufacturer I was talking to Siddharth earlier, uh, they are the guys who are supplying the tanks to Ukraine, and, but they also supply the products that uh, the line that we are in. So what happened was a bunch of Russian hackers got into it and uh, did a denial of service to that. Uh, the business we are in, from that unit started getting uh, shrunk, right? The whole production has come to a standstill. 
today it is them tomorrow it could be us that's right, right. so we have to constantly be looking out for uh, cyber threats ransomware cyber attacks and also you know new products as they get uh, you know evolved and get mature into the market there are people who want to you know come and steal the ip do what your processes are after all every company here in this business is differentiated by what they bring to the table so we have to protect ourselves from that kind of uh, scenario too so our ring fencing of our entire processes our internal uh, systems is what we deal with uh, on a day to day basis and the threats keep coming uh, luckily we have a very strong protection system today but you are only as good as the last mile last delivery that you have made right so it's a constant uh, you know an evolving battle that we have to keep going with that, that's my view absolutely in fact talking about last delivery and last mile i mean uh, zepto again is in that kind of a yeah. business uh, but uh, apart from the cyber risk which is yeah. obvious and which everybody faces actually uh, what are the key things companies like yours which are young companies growing right. companies uh, are doing sure. uh, in that space i can't speak for all companies i can talk about you know what we're up to um control side uh, we're actually are just now have implemented um, sap as our erp purely for all accounting procurement etc right which is um, just by design brings a lot of uh, uh, control to you know everything every financial process that exists within the company right whether it's what payouts are going out to riders or what inventory is being procured or you know all of that is sort of um there's a very strong sort of trail and all of those things where um you know in any sort of future audit etc all of that exists and by process you can set up a lot of control mechanisms in case there are any bad actors right systematically you can sort of uh, stop them there right so that's one part of it second is we're working with um various firms for a um, couple of uh, different audits right um and getting third parties right um third party firms to come in and take a look and uh, you know uh, not just at the numbers and the books and all that but also on the processes right to see that okay are there is there any scope for you know um any risk mitigation that we need to do and you know get those suggestions from them and then implement those so those are two of the things that we're doing so that coming back to you uh, would you see i mean like uh, shankar mentioned would you see cyber security as one of the biggest risks currently or uh, you think it's a mix of uh, multiple things at this point i think uh, cyber has been if you look at the world economic forum results etc uh, it has been among the top 3 risks over the last 3 years so it is definitely and you know especially given the context of uh, organizations embarking on digital transformation as a big agenda uh, whether it is to do with touching customers or distributors or your supply chain partners uh, i think cyber you're just enhancing the footprint of mm. what could be attacked mm. and cyber risk is clearly coming out to be one of the top 3 risks uh, you know in that sense and i think you know uh, to shankar's point and you know your initial question around geopolitics uh, state actors leverage mm. Mm. to go after each other's uh, you know, assets right mm. it's you weaponizing cyber in many ways and sometimes uh, it is not just an obviously in a weaponized environment state uh, you know critical infrastructure of countries comes into comes into threat comes under threat but it's not just about critical infrastructure what happens is some of the malware or some of the weapons that are uh, created by the state actors sophisticated state actors then starts going to the commercial world so yeah absolutely it is one of the big big threats shankar uh, one of the things which uh, you know many people say when talking about risk is that uh, digital transformation and all these things bring in risks but it's also a risk is also an opportunity in many cases what are the opportunities you see uh, you know as we look at the entire uh, risk ecosystem so, so <clears throat> digital transformation again uh, so let me start with that it's you have to uh, you have to embrace it as a must have for your own businesses mm. uh, you know growth to seize the competitive advantage today without that digital footprint with see uh, you cannot survive data drives everything in in today's world right to gather data you need to have uh, acquisition systems that mm. are covering every aspect of your business that level of that volumes of data comes the need to store it need to process it need to have people access it need to have people 
who can read that, interpret those insights and then act on it. That's right. And every stage is an opportunity to perform better, but it's also a risk because if you don't do it right, you, that is going to be your failure point. Driving point for any digital transformation really has to come from the top and they have to make the whole ecosystem enabled to get this process going through. The simple thing, you can invest all the money in the most snazzy technology, put all the cyber systems, the whole thing is going to collapse. The, the challenge really comes in having the adoption kick in. I think that is going to be uh, a key measure for the future and as firms change into a very data-driven digital transformation mode. But Kaivalya, tell me, uh, I mean, when we talk about digital transformation, yeah. the big thing which we now have to embrace as well as confront is AI. How do you or firms like you look at AI? Right, our journey actually on this topic of digital transformation has been a bit unique because um, from day one, right, without technology, our business would not have started. Right? Like from being able to deliver in 10 minutes requires how we forecast, right? Um, forecasting is sort of central to everything in the business because you need to know how many customers are going to open the app in low apparel in a particular hour so that you can plan to have the right number of riders there, uh, even inventory planning, right? Like if you want to um, sell milk, milk has very short shelf life. At the end of the day, you have a lot of stock that's expired, right? And so um, forecasting is one big area. Uh, beyond that, you know, what products are recommended to you at every step of the journey. Uh, there are a couple of models that, you know, recommend those products. Uh, so, yeah, there are various things like that, um, even the things like that. So, there are several ways in which we've, um, you know, implemented uh, machine learning, uh, you know, to enhance efficiency, result in a better customer experience, whatever the case might be. Um, so, yeah, right now, we're just leveraging it for all of those things. In terms of the risks, I don't think that there are risks to the business per se. I think there are more general sort of risks when it comes to you know the, the pace at which um, AI is developing across the world. But I, we don't see that being like a here and now risk per se. So that uh, I mean, he's he's uh, actually uh, hit the nail on the head. So what are uh, you know what are you thinking and your firm? What's your firm thinking on these things? And what's what are the client uh, experiences as far as AI goes? Sure, I mean clearly uh, as as businesses, AI is today I see it as an opportunity, but obviously the opportunity uh, if handled in the right manner, right? AI can have biases because of the kind of historical data you feed in right okay. so there's a learning that the ai needs to you know needs to that needs to kick in in many ways right so you've got to basically test out the ai deploy the right use cases when it comes to ai the other big issue is uh, you know the data ai requires a lot of data and and you're effectively starting to capture a lot of data from your customers from your employees from internet of things Right. And that plethora of data, you actually as a business are a custodian of that data. And of course, there's conversation around, do we need to regulate it? But I, yeah. I kind of uh, always believe technology will, uh, I mean, regulate, regulations will always lag technology mm. in many ways. So, yes. That's yeah, regulations lag technology, Shankar. But, you know, there's a whole lot of talk about guardrails, you know, being there for AI. And what is, what is your sense in terms of the company uh, you work in? Uh, what what how does ai play there we don't have it now but we are getting there and we need it and mm. the reason is uh, in our business the end state is about how our products perform in the field right and uh, it's about uh, reputation it is about uh, you know the design it is about the product that we make the quality that we eventually carry the residual quality has to be 100% there is no compromise on that Today, it is not always, there will always be a point uh, 00 percent, uh, 001 or 005 percent where we will have issues. So for us, uh, having an AI engine in place is extremely important to have that roadmap uh, laid out and the ability to predict where we are heading and fulfill that full loop wherein we are able to say it with certainty that yes, uh, you know, we will be able to do this. Today, we are doing it 
on our experience, mm. right? Mm. Tomorrow we we will want to do that based on data, mm. and I think that is where we are driving to, and uh, I. I believe we will need to have that kind of an engine in place to drive our future because you can definitely uh, one predict what you are going to be delivering and two because your ability to predict you can also bring in the efficiencies in the in costing in uh, and you don't see risks associated with that either. there is a risk because at the one end of the scale is you know over reliance on it will mm -hmm. also uh, be uh, if you don't have the uh, you know the guardrail that you talked mm -hmm. about in place you could uh, end up somewhere else so you have to have a check and balance in the whole system to make sure that uh, what you are uh, delivering is matching with the spec that you uh, intended it to do you know while we talk about digital transformation kaivalya that is also a people business in that mm -hmm. sense you know because ultimately digital is run by people but whatever you may say uh, in your business in particular it's again a very significantly people business uh, how are you looking at this and are you using technology in that sense to also keep a you know a keep order in the system i'll give a couple of examples of uh, yes the, the answer to the question is yes uh, and i'll i'll just maybe give an example um we have several thousands tens of thousands of um, delivery partners right that are on the ground um and uh, there are a lot of things that you can do in terms of training and we leverage a lot of bicycles and all of these things which are generally a bit safer um but we started thinking about okay how do we leverage technology for example to um you know m ensure that even the minority you know uh, of cases where you know there is a even your tire is punctured or this or any kind of issue uh, that that you know could be a problem we're able to solve for and um we did a couple of very small things you know an sos button for example and there's like a immediate uh, sort of helpline right that that exists uh, whether for example if um, if there has been uh, you know like i said a tire puncture or something as small as that or you know um there has been let's say god forbid an accident or any of these things there's a lot of stakeholders within our ecosystem as well that until now have not actually been exposed to a lot of technology so mm -hmm. one example of this would be the farmers that we work with right um until now there has been not pretty much no technology employed uh you know in in a big part of the agricultural sector uh, and for a big chunk of the fruits and vegetables that we buy 70% or so we buy ourselves from farms right and um one of the things that we started doing a few months ago is actually building technology there so that one very basic example of a pain point in a farmer's life is um i have supplied you tomatoes or potatoes or whatever i don't know when i'm going to get paid and i don't know how much exactly because i might have given you 1000 uh, you know 500 kilos out of that maybe only 450 is good stock 50 may not be so you'll only pay me for 450 i don't have that information real time and i don't know how much i'm going to get paid and when right so basic things like that you know building a farmer app where that visibility is sort of provided um and and uh, shankar the other question which we discussed and you sort of touched upon is the whole idea of getting the people to understand uh, how to use that technology as the digital transformation journey takes place uh, what are the skilling elements you think is lacking in indian uh, corporates in general and uh, maybe uh, the areas you're looking at in your company so you, you know change management here is a, is a big deal right and companies uh, need to understand that and you know at least from the business that i come from that is well recognized and a lot of investment goes in building the uh, or creating the building blocks that are needed to get that skilling done right so it's it's what is about technology while while a, you know user is uh, it's important for him to know what Uh, technology is it he doesn't need to be a, a very savvy technologist in in that right he just needs to understand what is going on the key area is interpreting what is coming out of it right and ability to use it that that, that ability to process the insights that come out of it is what is very very important so we are doing a lot of investment in making sure that uh, wherever digital transformation touches we are investing heavily to make sure that that there's a, there's a good leverage coming out of it so the training covers uh, basic technology skills basic cyber security hygiene you you know you don't use your systems to uh, talk to a outside world how does the insights help you and we are using uh, professional uh, uh, 
uh, you know, uh, experts, experts from universities and other uh, uh, practitioners to come and help us with that and also create uh, this in, into a uh, TQM, uh, you know, the, we call it the TQM temple. So, we bring the whole of this uh, learning into the TQM temple and it is institutionalized so that people go through gradings of it and are able to achieve what the comp business wants to achieve and that is driven as part of our overall uh, policy program every year we take up some specific areas and then start uh, inducing people into that so it's very structured so we are approaching the end of time uh, uh, for us um, uh, so that any closing comments uh, in terms of the way you look at digital transformation the journey which indian in, uh, companies have undertaken where they stand at this point and then i'll just uh, ask for closing comments from the others so sure uh, so i think uh, when it comes to digital transformation i think a lot of companies have embarked upon programs around digital transformation and that was actually accelerated quite a bit during the pandemic. Organizations are also dealing with mm. in structured uh, manners and risks associated with how do they handle data, risks associated with cyber, risks associated with the scalability and uh, one of the other aspects is how do you build resilience into all transformation programs. Kavale, a digital native, uh, yeah. how do you see a digital transformation playing out? Yeah, again, for us, it's uh, less of a transformation, more so, you know, the way, way of life. With it, and uh, <laughs> now it's just a matter of, like with the farmer example, just uh, trying to extend that as far as it can go. Mm. And, and of course, Shankar, your perspective on this. My perspective, you know, the company that I work for, uh, they have recognized this that to go digital is a very critical part of the whole process. So in a new plant that we are building, it is going to be fully digitalized. You know, multiple use cases are being brought in to support the, to bring in the efficiency that we need. And we are putting a very, uh, we are putting a very solid infrastructure in uh, from a IT networking standpoint to support this. And a number of use cases range from uh, everybody to, run the business. Hmm. So exciting times, uh, but also uncertain times uh, uh, and companies, India Inc. is well on the way uh, to the uh, in the journey to digital transformation. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, for your thank perspectives you. and uh, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.